and let me just reiterate what I told the kids. This has indeed been an amazingly gracious time for me, and I am indeed a different and better person for the three months that I've spent here. It's been a wonderful experience. Well, there was a great uh, news event this week, which was that a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, scientists found gold <laughs> and silver and platinum and a whole bunch of other things. Did you hear this story in the news? Yeah. So the event that these scientists discovered was something called a kilonova. Sounds pretty impressive. Something that ought to be on a PBS show, right? And uh, a kilonova is when two neutron stars collide. Neutron stars are about the densest things there are in the universe. They say that a teaspoon of the stuff in a neutron star would weigh as much as, the, as Mount Everest. But these neutron stars were more likely about the size of Manhattan. So you might realize, if you've had any scientific uh, insight at all, that when two things that big, that dense, collide at what they guessed was pretty close to the speed of light, exciting things will happen. <laughs> One scientist called it the greatest fireworks show in the universe. And what's so amazing is that we can even detect these things. This was in August that the first monitor picked up the gravitational wave, the ripple in the universal pond that this event caused. And it set off alarms. And then the message goes out to scientists all over the world, and they all start jumping into their chairs to look at their optical telescopes and, and uh, sound telescopes and all the things that they've got. And they start all trying to figure out where this thing came from, what it was. And uh, the uh, very large array here in New Mexico was involved in it, and the Hubble taste telescope, and so on and so forth. So they found out where it was. They actually got a picture of it very briefly. And it was just incredible. And what it confirmed was the belief that those kinds of spectacular events, obviously they don't happen very often, uh, are where our heavy metals come from, our heavy precious metals, like gold, like silver, like platinum, like uranium, and so on, that those events are where those elements are created. Wow, marvelous. But some people get a little unnerved about that kind of stuff. At our uh, Tuesday prayer group, for, briefly, we had a little conversation about the uproar here in New Mexico, about the revisions to the science curriculum. Because somehow these kind of things are scary. And in that revision, some of the things that are not supposed to be talked about were things like evolution and even the age of the planet. Now this event, which I said was, that scientists said was 130 million light years away, that also means it happened 130 million years ago. Because when you're looking into deep space, you're not only looking far away, you're looking into the past. What are we afraid of if we're talking about these kind of amazing, spectacular things? Well, to make a long story short, obviously there is some perception that traditional understandings of God are being challenged, aren't working so well. And we think of these kinds of discoveries as events that challenge that. And I would agree. Those ideas aren't working so well. But what we oftentimes don't realize is that those ideas are not also, also aren't the really the Bible's understanding of God. Because in fact, when you look carefully at the scriptures, the writers of those page, those words are pretty sharp, are pretty circumspect, and they don't say more than they know. In fact, in the discussion that goes on, the conversation that goes on with the scriptures, among the various scribes and writers over the centuries, the one thing that they all agree on is that we don't know God. And that's something that come, comes as a surprise to us. That with all those pages, again and again, the writers say, but we don't know God. God is a mystery to us. 
St. Augustine, one of the great ancient world Christian theologians said, the only thing our minds really know about God is that we don't know God. Thomas Aquinas, the greatest medieval theologian who wrote volumes, thousands and thousands of words, near the end of his life, looked at all the work that he had written and said, but it's all straw. It's all straw. And Martin Luther, who had a few things to say about God, also said that ultimately God is hidden from us. He used the Latin phrase, the Deus absconditus, the hidden God. That God wears a mask that we can't get beyond. And even in our first reading, we have some rather strange words where the prophet Isaiah is saying that Cyrus is the anointed of God. The Cyrus, the emperor of Persia. And that same word that in Hebrew that's translated here as anointed means Messiah. Cyrus is God's chosen one. It's like today saying Vladimir Putin is the one that God is using in the world. And he's doing strange things that we don't understand. And at the end, it's like the writer kind of wants to insert that knife and twist it and say, yes, I am God, the only one. Because I create light and darkness. I create wheel or welfare. And I create woe. The biblical writers are willing to envelop the entirety of our human experience with God. We think that question of why do bad things happen to peop good people is a new question. But the Bible was wrestling with it thousands of years ago. There's a mystery here. In our gospel this morning, Jesus is confronted with the Pharisees and the Herodians who are trying to trap him and whether or not he, we should pay taxes. And he very cleverly kind of evades their question and says, show me a coin. Now, it's unclear just exactly what the coin is. In the Gospel of Thomas, which as I said earlier was um, probably earlier, it, Jesus asked for a gold coin specifically. In this version, uh, which is, originates with Mark and Matthew and Luke have copied it, Jesus asked for a denarius, which would have been a silver coin, not unlike our coins today. And yeah, silver, gold in Jesus' hand is that stuff that was made in that collision or some other collision like it. Who knows how many millions of years ago. That's in that coin that he picks up. And apparently the denarius is not, was not unlike our coinage because they said every year as they made it, the quantity of silver dropped further and further and further. So in any case, so there's a little bit of that stuff in here. A little bit of stuff in the rings that you wear made far away long ago. Amazing. Amazing, this universe that we live in. We know so much now. And again, somewhat like our knowledge of God, we know so much that we realize we know actually so little about how this vast, immense universe functions. And yet, here we are. Here we are in some mysterious way. Some have said that this is how the universe has become conscious of itself, is through us. So far, so far we're the only ones that we know of that think about the universe. I have a wonderful, lovable dog, but I don't think any thoughts cross her head about why she's here or what's going on out there. We have that gift to be able to appreciate this wonderful place. So what about this mysterious God that we know nothing about? That doesn't sound very encouraging or helpful. Jesus goes on and says, show me a coin. Show me that denarius. Whose picture's on it? Whose image is on it? And in the Roman world, they put the image of the current emperor on it. And Jesus very cleverly says, well, then give to the emperor what belongs to him. Implying that if his image is on it, that must mean it's his. And give to God the things that are God's. 
Hmm. So what is it that has God's image on it? Well, from the creation story in Genesis, we're told we have God's image on us. Give to God the things that are God's. We bear the image of God. What is God like? What does God look like? Who is God? Jesus is, in effect, saying, look in the mirror. Or other places he'll say, look at your neighbor. That's where God's image is. That's where you're going to find and encounter God. All of those scriptural writers, all those theologians, Martin Luther himself said, the only things we know about God are what God has chosen to reveal to us. And one of the things that God has revealed <coughs> is that God is gracious. That God likes to give things away. That's the ultimate meaning of that creation story. Why did God create the universe? Because he wanted to. It's a free gift. Our lives are gifts. Luther struggled so much with that mysterious God. That God just seemed to condemn him at every turn until finally he realized that his gift was simply, his life was simply a gift. The phrase that we'll hear on Reformation Sunday, justified by grace through faith. Justified. That's a strange word we don't use often. But we sometimes say, what justifies this action? And we may question, what justifies my existence? What justifies the air you breathe, the earth you walk on, the resources you consume, the time you take in other people's lives? What justifies it? God's free gift. God's free gift. That's what justifies it. We live in this wonderful, amazing, mind-boggling world that God has given to us. God just, God just created out of free will. Yes, that God is very mysterious. But at the other hand, we have all of this as a sign of who that God is. And we have us. If we want the world to take us seriously, we need to be able to talk and act seriously, like 21st century adults, right? We don't have to be afraid of this world that we live in or the things that we discover about it, because in all of that, we continue to discover who this God is. But the most important thing that we can do for the world to take us seriously is to show how seriously we take each other and how seriously we take our neighbors. Love your neighbor as yourself, the Bible says, and Jesus reiterated, because that's where we find God. That's where we see the face of God. And in a world which so easily casts people aside and judges them for skin colors and language and the place they live and their IQ and their income and so many other measurements, we are the people that say, apart from all of that, the most important thing about you is that you bear the image of God, that you were created in God's image, and that you are a gift to me from the God who loves us all. Amen. Amen.